How's it going everyone? It's all of you from Mother Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to forecast the type of conditions you should experience this fall for the United States. But before I begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the Enzo outlook over the next several months because that's a key determinant in what type of conditions we're about to experience this fall for the United States and as you can see the most likely scenario is that over the next several months we will experience a la nina with a smaller chance of a neutral phase but it seems like the more likely chance is that we will be in a la nina phase not only for the summer months but headed into fall where in fact the La Nina chance does increase into the fall months of September, October, November to where the chance rises not by much, only around a 3% chance, um, only around a 3% increase, um, but we do see that there's a 61% chance of a La Nina occurring during the fall months and that plays a big role in terms of what type of conditions we're bound to experience this fall because if we were to take a look at what typically happened, what um, pattern typically develops in the United States during a La Nina. We typically see a pronounced jet stream dip move through the mid the Midwest of the United States, where we do see a little bit more moisture than average right around the Ohio Valley as a result of a multitude of troughs moving through along with this jet stream dip. And we do see a higher amount of instability in this region as a result of this more pronounced jet stream dip. We also typically see more cooler and moist than average conditions around the Pacific Northwest and even further eastward as well as a result of this jet stream dip bringing a lot of that Arctic air for a southward and we also see a prevailing Pacific jet stream which isn't shown in this graphic but there's a um, during a La Nina we typically do see a Pacific jet stream move through the Pacific Northwest which does bring a lot more troughs to the Pacific Northwest coast which does moisten up the atmosphere quite a bit in the um, right around the Pacific Northwest and typically during a La Nina in the United States we see much warmer and drier than average conditions for the majority of the southern United States where we do see warmer and drier than average conditions for the southeast and for the southwest as well so based on the fact that a La Nina is the most likely scenario for this fall we could base our forecast based on this graphic but we need to take a look at several different factors to really determine if there will be um, if there will be a chain, um, if this graphic might not necessarily be 100% accurate because we, because of another factor that pretty much is going against what typically happens during La Nina, we need to take a look at sea surf temperatures. We of course need to take a look at the current drought monitor to really determine what how those factors will manipulate what typically happens during a la nina because um just because we're bound to experience a la nina this fall does not mean it's set in stone that these conditions will play out for this fall so we need to take a look at several other different factors another factor we need to take a look at or at least another thing we need to take a look at is the cfs climatology model for the united states and you see that um for the three month average when it comes to precipitation anomaly you see that What's surprising is that the sun, well, not, not necessarily surprising of what we typically see during La Nina, but we do see that um, conditions are drier than average for the southeastern portion of the United States, while we do see more moist than average conditions around the Pacific Northwest. So um, based on the precipitation anomalies, the CFS model is forecasting. It isn't really much different than what we typically do experience during La Nina. The only difference is that it's typically a little bit more moist than average right now in the Ohio River Valley. But that's about it when it comes to the precipitation anomalies and a little bit drier um, towards the southwest. However, I definitely take the CFS model with a grain of salt when forecasting months away because the CFS model is bound to change its forecasts um, a lot before the fall months come because we're still only in the month of May. There's still June, there's still July, there's still August um, until we reach September to where um, um, and that's a lot of time for the CFS model to change its forecast. So I take the precipitation anomaly with a grain of salt, but it's at least something to take into slight consideration when making this forecast because the CFS model does have at least some idea of what it's talking about, especially since it's pretty much 
um, very representative of what typically happens during a La Nina pattern for the United States. So that's something something to keep in mind. Now take a look at the precipitation anomaly, the three month precipitation, I mean not the precipitation anomaly, the temperature anomaly, my bad. And we do see that um, most of the United States based on what the CFS model is forecasting is expected to be much warmer than average. Now this isn't a far cry from what we've been seeing throughout the United States over the past several months, especially the western portion of the United States, because you guys have been in quite a bit of a drought, which has been increasing the temperature, um, the temperatures overall, as well as drying up the atmosphere um, in that region, which has led to warmer than average conditions for the western half of the United States. But and we're also seeing warmer than average temperatures throughout the eastern half of the United States, pretty much the entirety of the lower 48, which is very interesting, but. I, again, I take it with a grain of salt because CFS model is known to change its forecast a lot. But um, I, but I will say that when it comes to temperature anomaly, it isn't that far off because I still do expect most of the United States to be warmer than average thanks to a La Nina, the, the drought that's going on in the western half of the United States. And another thing I'm about to show you now is sea surf temperatures, which could encourage warmer than average temperatures for the United States this fall. Now, um, if I were to show you guys a drought monitor, you see that pretty much anywhere that's west of the Missouri River Valley, you guys are under a severe drought, especially closer to Texas and New Mexico, where wildfires have been a very big concern for you guys in that area as all of how dry it's been. So that's something, something to um, pay close attention to because when there's a drought, not only is it of course a lot drier than average, but it's typically a lot warmer than average because dry soil heats up a lot faster than moist soil because that all that short wave radiation isn't wasted on trying to convert that liquid into a gas phase when um in moist soil and instead all that um when there's dry soil there isn't enough moisture for that short wave radiation to pretty much um get wasted on trying to convert that liquid into a uh, gas which means that all that heat energy is transferred to the ground which heats up dry which heats up dry soil a lot faster than uh, moist soil would which would raise the overall temperature during a drought um um for and um the united states and this seems like it's going to be the case and um like i've been saying in a lot of my previous videos it's very difficult to get out of drought as it doesn't happen overnight so i think chances are this drought will continue into this fall especially since during a la nina conditions remain drier than average for the western half of the united states and it's also important to point out that Sea surf temperatures off the Pacific coast are cooler than average, so any sort of instability that would maybe moisten up the atmosphere a little bit for the Pacific, uh, for the southwestern portion of the United States won't be there, which will um, just add on to the severity of the drought for a lot of the western half of the United States. So I do expect this drought to continue into the fall months, which would mean warmer than average and drier than average conditions should be expected for the, the western half of the United States. While the eastern half, you see that there isn't really much of a drought going on. We do have a small drought maybe going on right around the coastal portions of the Carolinas, but I don't think it's necessarily anything severe or anything that's gonna play a significant role in determining um, in determining the temperatures or the amount of precipitation you'll receive. So I don't think it's necessarily much to be concerned about. And, um, and also, um, what's important, um, the reason why I want to point out there's no drought in the eastern half of the United States is that now there's more likely of a chance that more of a sinking or more of a rising motion in the atmosphere will be more likely for the eastern half of the United States because there, since there's so much sinking air in this region, all that air that's forced downward is eventually going to want to go into an area where it could diverge and move upward into the atmosphere it's just so the air molecules won't be so close together. And that area would be the eastern half of the United States, which is the next closest area to where there isn't a drought, which I think will promote more of an upward motion in the atmosphere, which could moisten up the atmosphere quite a bit 
for a lot of the eastern half of the United States, which is something I'm definitely taking into consideration as well mate, when making this forecast. So um, so based on the drought monitor, we could expect warmer and drier than average conditions for the western half of the United States um, um, this fall, while for the eastern half, you should expect maybe more moist than average conditions because um, this is the only area where that air could really rise and that would allow for more um, convection to occur along the eastern half of the United States. So that's something, something to take into consideration when making this forecast. Now, um, another thing I want to show you guys is, of course, the sea surface temperatures, which do play another pretty big role when it comes to um, precipitation and the temperature anomalies. And we do see that throughout the eastern half of the United States, sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average. This includes the Gulf of Mexico, and this includes the east coast as well, where we're seeing sea surface temperatures much warmer than average. So you're probably asking, what does this mean? Well, for one thing is that, of course, warmer than average air temperatures should be expected, especially if you're closer along the coast, because um, water because the ocean temperatures play a major role in terms of the temperatures you experience in pretty much every part of the world. If you're around a cold body of water, chances are it's going to be very difficult to get um, very warm conditions because the because that transfer of energy from that warm water or lack thereof of out of cool water is so low that it, there isn't a lot of movement in the air molecules to create a warmer than average climate. So as a result, since we're seeing warmer than average um, sea surface temperatures along the eastern half of the United States, you should expect warmer than average air temperatures because there's going to be a high transfer of energy um, that will force the air molecules to move around more and that will allow for warmer than average temperatures especially along the eastern half of the united states and along the coast where you guys are closest to the water and it's not only tep and sea surface temperatures don't only play a role when it comes to um the air temperature you should experience they also play a role in terms of how much lift or sinking air there will be in the atmosphere if the war if there's a warmer than if the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average, of course, that will promote more convection because there's going to be a lot more energy. There's going to be a lot more energy with the water that's going to eventually transfer over and phase change into a gas, which would force the air molecules move a lot more and as a result the atmosphere during in um with warmer than average temperatures could hold a lot more water vapor which would allow for more convection so as a result of these warmer than average sea surface temperatures i do expect a lot of the coastal regions of the atlantic to be more moist than average as a result of a higher amount of convection and also we have to keep in mind that during the fall months that's just pretty much right around the peak of the hurricane season such as in the months of september and october so there is a pretty good possibility that at least somewhere in the united states you will experience a landfalling tropical cyclone whether it's a tropical storm hurricane major hurricane that could add on to the um a higher amount of precipitation for a lot of the eastern half of the united states so that's definitely something to keep in mind as a result of these warmer than average sea surface temperatures i expect the coastal regions of the the east coast as well as the gulf of mexico to be warmer and more moist than average for this fall and another thing i want to show you guys is the um temperature anomaly trends during the summer and overall during the year for the southeast and if i were to show you guys um especially past the year 2000 you see that past the year 2000 the annual um, the annual air temperature has been much um, has been warmer than average for the most part and the reason why is because past let's say 1995 we've been in a, multi, a positive multi decadal oscillation which is promoting hot warmer than average sea surface temperatures um, which has been promoting warmer than average sea surface temperatures for the Atlantic which has been raising the air temperature for the southeast which directly shows that the sea surface temperatures play a major role in terms of the air temperature anomalies you should expect during the fall months you see that um, past the year let's say 1990 um, 1995 we see that precipitation anomalies for during a uh, positive 
Atlantic multidecadal oscillation have been much warmer than average, which has been promoting, um, uh, I mean, has um, more precipitation than average, which has been promoting more precipitation and higher than average um, temperatures for the southeast. So that's something, something to keep in mind. And if we were to take a look, you see that we've been in a positive Atlantic multidecadal oscillation for over 20 years now. So as though we should expect warmer than average sea surface temperatures i mean warmer than average air temperatures as well as more precipitation than average as a result so that's only something to keep in mind because in years prior to let's say 1990 the precipitation was below average for the most part and so were the air temperatures so um we so during a positive multidecadal atlantic multidecadal oscillation it does promote warmer and more moist than average conditions for a lot of the coastal united states so that's only something to keep in mind and the temperature anomalies i just showed you completely prove that which is definitely a big data point we need to pay close attention to and take a look at the hurricane season forecast i won't go too in depth with how this hurricane season will turn out um if you want to check that out you can check my videos down below but long um story short um the hurricane season is expected to be more active than usual especially closer to the eastern half of the united states which would promote more tropical cyclones making landfall in the united states which would which could promote more precipitation than average overall so that's something something to keep in mind when making this fall forecast and now here's my official fall forecast for 2022 you see that for the northeastern portion of the united states i'm expecting warmer than average conditions this fall because the uh, sea surface temperature should be warmer than average which i think will raise the air temperature quite a bit and we typically don't see the effects of a uh, pronounced jet stream dip that far eastward so as a result i do expect warmer than average conditions for the, the northeast coast um, warmer and moist than average for the southeast for obvious reasons the um, sea surface temperatures will be much warmer than average which will promote more convection and more summer thunderstorms for the southeast and take a look at around the southwest i'm expecting it to be very hot and dry i don't expect the drought to go away anytime soon for that area so make sure to pay close attention to that and we typically do see dry than average conditions during a lot of media and i'm expecting more cooler and moist than average conditions for the pacific northwest and the northern midwest as a result of a uh, strong la nina so this is my fall forecast for 2022 if you want even more in detail forecast make sure to comment down below your location and i'll make sure to give you guys a more detailed forecast for your look for the, um, specific location but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more about the content and i hope you guys all have a great day